welcome everyone. Um, today I'm going to do just a, a short practice for working on the area of our outer hips and the piriformis. Uh, this was a request I had to um, do some piriformis stretches. I'm going to just give you a little brief anatomy lesson and then we'll get started on our practice. So sometimes we get this pain deep in the butt area, the uh, glute area, um, and we often call this sciatica. Um, it can be caused by a small but very important muscle that's deep within our hip. Uh, most of the cases of sciatica are caused by this muscle. Piriformis is one of a few small deep hip rotators that you use to turn your thigh out. Okay? Um, it also extends your hip when you walk and abducts the thigh, takes it out to the side when your hip is flexed. So the sciatic nerve is sandwiched between that piriformis muscle and the hard tendons that lie against the bone of our sacrum and our pelvic bone. So if the piriformis is tight, and it often is, um, it puts pressure on our sciatic nerve and it pushes against the tendons beneath it. And that can cause pain called piriformis syndrome. Um, it can also be caused by herniation of the lumbar spine. So Always make sure that if you do have pain that you get it checked out. Um, so this is meant for information purposes, so I want everyone to be safe. So um, make sure you contact your doctor if you do have this situation going on. So we're going to start in a moment and we're going to work on kind of both strengthening and stretching this area of the body out. We're going to come into constructive rest for a little bit. might want a blanket from under your head. So constructive rest, we're going to walk the feet apart and let the knees drop in. So just take a few moments here, this helps relax the lower back when we have this position because it's broadening the area of the sacrum and also relaxing this area in the low back. Find a nice slow brush of the breath up and down through your spine. A lot of times uh, pain is related to our stress levels as well. Inflammation can increase when we're under a lot of stress or if we have an injury that could be inflammation in that area. So our breath can help us regulate and manage that pain. Walk the feet apart, or knees apart again, and so your feet are hips distance. We're going to bring the right knee into the chest and clasp your hands right above your shin. And then simply press your shin into your hands and pull your hands into your shin just for a moment. And just kind of noticing what you're feeling as you do that. And then release. And we're going to cross that right ankle over the left knee. Flexing that right foot gently. And then we're going to press our right hand into our right thigh. And press our thigh back into our hand. Now do the opposite. Put your hand on the outside of your leg. And pull your leg towards you. But push your leg into your hand. And at the same time, draw your knee away from center just slightly. And notice again where you feel it. For me, it's kind of this outer hip, outer leg area. Release. And then from here, pick your left foot up, if that feels okay. So you might notice an increase of that sensation on that right outer hip and butt glute area. Keep this foot gently flexed, and then if you can, you're going to interlace your hands around the back of your thigh. Now, if your back gets all hunchy and roundy, and you feel really congested in your chest, I'm going to ask you to use a belt here around your legs to extend your arms, and that way you won't feel so congested. Let the tailbone get heavier. For me, 
that also will increase the sensation in my outer hip. Press your ankle and your leg into each other and push forward with your front, your left foot. Now draw the right knee toward the right and keep the tailbone heavy. Keep your shoulders down rather than hunch up. One more breath. And then we're going to release the left foot back down. Keep the ankle to knee cross. We're simply going to come into a twist. So walk your left foot a little bit to the left, hips a little to the right rather, hips a little bit to the right, and drop the legs over to the left. Now that foot may or may not come to the floor, but here I'm feeling this whole area get a nice stretch. Now I might try to draw my right knee a little bit forward and that changes the sensation you can play in your own body see what feels right for you so if pulling that knee away is too much then let it go for now arms can be out to a t now press down with your legs and your feet and kind of press this left shin or left thigh rather into your right shin and pull back this way with the right hip to the right. One more breath. And then go ahead and come back to the start. Uncross your legs. Even yourself out. Maybe windshield wiper a little bit just to release that work. And then let's do the other side. Now we're going to bring the left knee in, hug it in, and resist by pushing your shin into your hands and your hands pull on your shin. All right, and then ankle to be crossed. We're going to stay with the foot on the floor for a moment. Press your hand and your thigh into each other. And then hand on the outside. Pull the leg towards you as you push your leg into your hand. Notice where you feel it. You might even get a little shaking because this is a muscle maybe we're not used to using. Release. And of course, if anything aggravates your pain, back off and do what actually feels good and what helps. We're going to lift that foot up. Again, you might want a belt. Otherwise, clasp your hands around your right thigh. Gently flex your feet. Press your ankle and your thigh into each other and draw the left knee toward the left as you keep your tailbone and your sacrum heavy. You should feel like a little curve here in your low back so it's not rounding into the floor. Shoulders down, chest up. For one more breath. And then we're going to release that foot down. Scoot a little bit to the left. And then drop the legs over to the right. Hopefully that foot can come to the floor. If not, you're going to do what you can. And then maybe draw the left thigh away from you. And draw the left hip toward the floor. And for me, that gets into this whole area here. One more breath. Pressing your leg and your shin into each other. And then release. Coming back to the center, uncross. And then windshield wiper your legs again. One more time, just to release that work. Alright, we're going to roll all the way to one side. Just kind of stack up your knees, stack up your legs. So these are called clamshells. Some of us don't like these very much, me, but they are very helpful. Um, so do the best that you can. We're going to keep the feet together and lift the top thigh and knee. And then immediately I'm feeling an engagement in that area. And then release. And then lift it 
it up. Hold for a moment, feel those muscles engage and release. One more time, lift it up. Now we're gonna hold it up, hold it up and do little pulses up. Resist a little bit, so kind of pretend that it's hard to move through the air. Thick. Engage the muscles. Pulse up one more. Release. And just get that a little rub down. And then we're going to pick the leg up and lower it down. Again, moving through resistance. Pick up like you're squeezing something between your legs. Lift up. Squeeze down. One more. Lift up. And now small pulses. A little flex to that top foot. I'm really feeling some work here in my hip and my glute. pulse and release a little rub down here now if you're finding any of these things um, helpful you can always do it longer pause your video if you need to I'm gonna just do it for a shorter time now we're gonna go to the other side so I am gonna just move my blanket you can be facing away if you wish but I want to stay facing the camera okay so knees stacked up, lined up, first feet together. Lift up, lower down. Lift up for a little hold, lower down through resistance. Lift up, down, now this time hold it up. Hold it up, small pulse. So we're strengthening this area. One more pulse and release. leg up and down through resistance like you're trying to squeeze something between your legs lift up and down one more up and down now hold it up small pulse bottom leg is pressing into the floor it's a very small controlled movement one more pulse and release. Good. All right. From here, we're going to come up. So carefully start to press yourself up. And we're going to come into tabletop pose, all fours. Right. So from here, we're going to take the right leg out on an angle kind of lift it up and then we're going to bring it across to the opposite arm. So out on an angle, lift it up, toes up, and then across. So when we do this, you can repeat. Now I'm engaging that muscle. Now I'm stretching it. Engaging, stretching. One more. Engaging, stretching, and release. You can always rock a little bit. You can take a child's pose anytime if you need a break. All right, other side. So now leg, left leg out and on an angle. Take it across and to the right. Out and up on an angle and across. So we're kind of going into an external rotation as we take this leg up. One more. Now release, and let's all take a child's pose. Hands can be straight ahead or under your forehead. Maybe rock a little bit side to side. All right, so from here, take your right leg in front of your left leg and bring your feet out to the sides. So maybe I will show this this way. So in your tabletop, Bring your right leg in front of your left leg and bring your feet out to the side. We're going to squeeze the legs together at the inner thigh. 
inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, sit back. How far you sit back is up to you. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, stretch back. One more time. Good. Now from here, we're going to sit all the way back. And we're going to bring the legs into kind of a twist a twist position. So we're going to be twisting. So not in a gobukasana. So that would be this one. We're going to have the foot, right foot flat. So I'm not mirroring you in this. Lift up tall through your chest. Now let's first bring the hands onto the floor, tall spine, and press right shin and left leg into each other. Good. Now left arm up. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, either hold your leg or cross your elbow past your knee. Now if your arm bone's not long enough to make it, you're going to stay here. So I'm going to show uh, staying here. Pull your right hip away from your right knee and press your shin and your hand into each other or your elbow, arm and leg into each other and turn to your right. So I want this pressing which helps engage that outer leg. Turn, one more breath. And then back to the center. Now we'll go into that Gomukhasana. So now we're gonna try and see if we can stack our legs on top of each other. The knees are stacked. If this is too much for you, you're gonna come into a cross leg position. Another option is to grab a block and sit up on a block or a pillow. So I'm going to stay on the floor. So ready, I'm getting a big stretch here. I'm going to press down into the edges of my feet, lift my chest, squeeze the legs together. Now you might stay right here. Some of you might take a forward fold. So inhale, chest lifts, and you're going to start to walk your hands out any amount. Keep squeezing the legs towards each other. Pulling the right hip back. One more breath. And then we're going to slowly start to come up. Lean back. Undo your legs and just wiggle a little bit. Bounce them out. And then we'll start that sequence on the other side. So just kind of notice how that right hip and uh, glute feel after that sequence. And now let's come back to tabletop pose. This time left leg swings in front. Good. Squeeze the legs together. Pull the feet away from each other. Inhale, chest lifts. Exhale, shift again, inhale forward, exhale back. One more time, inhale forward, exhale back. And this time, come all the way back to sit. Make any adjustments. And then we're going to try and bring this foot flat. Remember, you can also make it a less of a deep twist if you like. First, just Sit up tall, hands to the floor. Press your shin and your leg into each other. Pull the left hip back. Good. Now we're going to come into that twist. So we're going to inhale, reach the right arm up, 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 and turn, either hook or hold. And then I'm going to keep pushing down into my feet, resisting my shin and leg into each other. Pull the left hip back and turn. Now, the more I press my bottom leg and shin into each other, the more I get into this outer hip area. One more breath. And then inhale, unwind, and then we'll start to stack the knees on top of each other. So you're welcome to stay 
in an upright position. You can add in some cord under your hips. Sit up taller on a block or a blanket. Especially if you're rounding here, you can also come into just a cross leg position. So squeeze the legs, root into the feet, and then maybe a forward fold. If that feels good for you. If it's too intense, you're gonna skip it. And just stay upright. Holding here another moment. a few more breaths. Let yourself soften into this posture. Great. So from here we're going to come up and we're going to swing the back leg around to the front. And we're going to come into either a cross leg position. I'm going to face forward. So again, we can do cross leg. Or we're going to come into fire log. So fire log, we're going to stack our shins up on top of each other. Flex both feet. Modifications here. Blocks. Sitting up onto a prop. Or lessen the degree here. So bring your foot more halfway onto your shin. Those of us who can are going to stack the shins up and flex the feet so our legs are like fire logs stacked on top. Lift up tall, shoulders back. And now try to pull your legs apart from each other. This is isometric work. Pull the legs apart. Good. And now staying here or again taking that forward fold. So this one becomes more intense as we fold. Actually, both of these um, different poses do in the hips, so stay up if that feels better. Come down deeper if you wish. Pull the legs apart. wipers or straighten your legs. Loosen things up again. Alright, let's try the other side. So we'll come back to pigeon pose with the left leg forward. Either from your dog or your table. 
Right leg is straight back from your hip. Toes are flat. And then staying up tall for a moment, squeeze that imaginary block, press into your front shin, pull back with your left sit bone and hip. You can stay here or come down. So once we come down here, it becomes a more of a passive range of motion, passive stretch. If it feels better, you can stay active by rooting into your shin, squeezing that block or just let it be really chill. We've already done a lot of strengthening, so it's okay to relax now a little bit. And say hi to Mr. Oreo. Locks, blankets under the hips, or widen that foot out a little bit. Staying up tall and pull the legs apart for that resistance work. So you can stay here working this or start to hinge forward. As I hinge forward, I want to keep lifting into my chest and then walk the hands out. breaths here. All right, let's slowly start to come up, lean back, stretch your legs out, either wiggle or some windshield wipers here. We're going to come on to our backs in a moment. We're almost done, so this is a quick practice that you could always combine with um, the sun cells, the sun salutation video if you want a longer practice, make it a full experience, or just do this on its own as a standalone. Okay, so from here I'm going to take my left leg out and take my right leg straight up, arms out to a T. I'm going to just shift a little bit to the side so I don't hit the wall. So I'm going to reach up through that right leg, inhale, and as I exhale, I'm going to take it across my body and look over my right shoulder, and then repeat. I'm still a little close to the wall, so I'm going to shift, inhale, exhale, take it over. Now if that's too much, you can always go bent. And if you can, think about your leg going up and over something. One more time, up and over. Now we're gonna stay in that position. Foot can come to the floor, you might hold it if you wish. You can bend it if you wish. Or you can just let it relax. Looking over your right shoulder. One more breath. From here, if the leg is straight, bend it, engage your belly, and carefully come back. And then we'll even ourselves out and try the other side. So right leg out, left leg up, arms out to a T. Inhale, exhale, twist and look over your opposite shoulder. Inhale, exhale. Again. Last time, and then we're going to hold it. Remember, you have options bending that knee, holding the foot if you wish. I'll 
slowly this hip away from your torso. out and then let's take our knees to the chest for a good squeeze rock a little bit side to side and you can stay with that or a happy baby remember you can always do here behind the legs hold ankles or hold feet feet are flat knees are deeply bent let that tailbone get heavy, maybe a little rock. And actually, let's do one more thing. Legs up, cross the right leg in front. We're in that same kind of gomukhasana, where our knees are stacked. We're going to either hold our shins behind our legs or our feet. And then draw the leg a little closer, but keep the tailbone heavy. And then rock. So when I rock to the left, I get a bigger stretch on that right side. All right, let's change sides, unwind the legs, cross left leg in front, Gomukhasana, your choice of hand positions. Squeeze the legs, draw the feet apart from each other, tailbone heavy, and then a rock. Your choice if you wish to relax longer in your shavasana, you can always do so. Really beneficial to spend more time. But just for the sake of the video, we'll start to close here. So those of you who want to stay, stay in your shavasana. If you want to come out, you're going to deepen the breath a little bit at a time. Feel energized, beginning small movements in fingers and toes. Maybe a big stretch or hug your knees. As you're ready, coming over to your right side for a brief pause. And when you're ready, press up. If you're staying in Shavasana, enjoy. The rest of us finding a comfortable seat. Notice any changes in the area of your hips and your glutes. We're going to bring our hands together to close our practice. 
thank yourself for taking this time to be with yourself in your practice, healing mind, body, spirit. Inhale deeply, and as you exhale, bow your head to your heart.